Hi, I'm Todd Allen, Zone Line Trainer for GE Appliances, and I'm here today with Edwin with Staybridge Suites here in Burlington, uh, Massachusetts. So, how long have you been working here, uh, Edwin? So, a year. A year, all right. So, uh, you must be loving life then, right? Uh, Absolutely. <laughs> all right. Very good. So, we've got a pretty big project ahead of us today. You've got a first company model VTAC that has failed and you're going to replace it with one of our new uh, AZ9VH12DAC. That's an inverter VTAC which means it's variable speed, variable capacity and you guys have several different floor plans here. One bedroom, two bedroom, efficiencies. So actually this is a great unit for this property because this one model will cover the entire range and capacity of the, the BTU capacities you need. Pretty powerful machine, right? So the things that we've got today is we've got our unit, we've got our transition over here, we've got our drain platform, electrical connection, and our thermostat. So those are the things that we're going to use. Oh, and by the way, we've got our mini manual over here to you know, show us how to kind of set this up, commission it, go through the auxiliary settings and all that. What questions do you have before we get started? It's easy installation? I think it's an easy installation. Let's get through it and you tell me whether it's easy, okay? I'm ready. All right. Okay, Edwin, so we've got some considerations here. First of all, they've set this existing plenum well inside the, the closet. So it's already taken up almost six and three quarter inches of the closet. So now it's not just the closet dimension that we've got to be concerned about. What we really need to be concerned about is how far it is from the front of this plenum uh, to our, our, actually we need to the inside of the closet. You've done some modifications here. You've removed this uh, trim material here. So we've got our 24 inches minimum and we'll be able to put a return air grill in the door here to get return air into the room. But really, you probably want uh, 24 inches minimum from the, the face of this to the inside of the closet. So we've got around that with this. And another thing is, it has a different place for the, the primary drain. So we're gonna have to make sure our drain uh, comes into this here area here. And then this is our secondary. When the water overflows here, goes into the secondary, and on each side there's a channel that will allow the water to go uh, into the back and drain outside to let you know that you know, you've got a problem with the primary and uh, it needs to be unclogged. So we need to remove a piece of foam that is on our transition piece because it's, it's doing the same thing that we've got on our transition, which is right here. And so this foam is really doing the same thing that this right here is. So we're just going to remove this, this foam from our transition and that will allow us to put it into place here. All right, Edwin, so where is it where we're going to do the replacement? You've already got the unit removed. We've got the, uh, the plenum here. We're going to have to remove this air divider because we're going to install a new div air divider. And then we need to remove these gussets on the side here. We need to make a cut here and make a cut here so we can get these gussets off so our drain platform will go on top of this. Okay. Well, Edwin, you've only been at this I think that's nine minutes and you did a fine job a very you made quick work of getting those gussets out and uh, it just it looks great so the next step is to remove that divider right okay all right All right, Edwin, so you've brought in the, the transition, and that's the transition. And that's necessary because that plenum, our unit will not mate up to that, that plenum. So we have to have a transition to where our unit can attach. So this is a, a we're going to attach this to the existing plenum, and then our model will uh, fit right up to this area right here and do a good job of sealing. 
-hmm. what it is uh, top okay so that's a very good question that is for makeup air so you've got a unit that's not makeup air so we're going to leave this block off plate in place but if you had a makeup air unit around back there are some screws that you could remove and remove that block off plate that would allow air to come in uh, from the exterior so we'll leave that on and we've got some other considerations to, to consider too one is we've got that divider between the front and rear half of that platform so if you'll turn over that transition there so if we look at the bottom of our transition here this foam block is going to take up the exact same space as this right here so we can't use both we're going to have to remove this from our transition so go ahead and, and remove that perfect all right so now you've got the the transition and you're ready to install it so you can just go ahead and install that uh, Edwin, the best way to do it is probably put the, the top in, uh, you know, lean it out a little bit, get the top all the way in, and then push your bottom into place. All right, so that looked simple. Yeah. Edwin, did, I, did, I wasn't even sure you, you got it all the way in there because it went so fast. Uh, that was pretty easy, right? That's a perfect cocktail. All right, all right. So Edwin, now we're, we gotta secure that transition. It's not just gonna sit there. So there's several different ways that we could secure it. We could use screws that would secure from the side and then go into the existing plenum and that would secure it. Or we've got some angle brackets that can be used in a couple of different ways. They could be used flat if the, the transition was all the way flat against the wall, which in this case it's not. Uh, or you could bend the brackets and use it to attach them that way. So there's a number of different ways you could secure it. So we'll just let you determine how you want to do it and let you go. Okay, All right. ready. Now. Edwin, you're getting ready to uh, install the, the supports for the divider plate. And let's take a look at the screws you're going to use for that. So they are not self-drillers. They are the, uh, the 5 16 screws, and then you'll use that to secure the supports to the plenum and then uh, the baffle plate. All right, so I see you, you've gotten an idea here. Uh, you've pre-drilled or you've run those screws into the components already. That way they, they don't uh, kind of fight you. So now you're just gonna tighten them up. So let's... So you've got quite a bit of, of rust and, and uh, stuff in the, the drain here. So we probably want to test that to see 
if everything's okay. This is all working. Yeah, so let's get some water and, and pour down there and make sure everything's working properly. We better address that before we move on any further. So you've got your two by fours cut to length and all you need to do, it's gonna take some pressure to, to get those in there. So uh, push really, really hard. I see you've discovered the, the, the drain kit there <laughs> and you're looking at the platform saying, well, what does this do? So if you'll, you'll take that out, you'll see one side is threaded and then one side's just a slip joint on that elbow right there. So on that elbow, that, that's the threaded side right there, and then, it, then that's the, the, the flat side. So if you'll just screw that on, or you, you go ahead and put that, yeah, there you go. Get that in there good and tight, and then secure this. Now what we've got to determine is where that drain needs to be uh, to line up with, with our, our primary drain system over here so I think you've determined that I think you're, you've got it right on the spot uh, <laughs> so let's let's put it back in there and then see how it lines up all right so it's all locked in and let's see how it lines up there I think by Jove you've got it what do you think it's strong, this is it's strong. Yeah. <laughs> very strong very strong So we're ready to go ahead and, and lock the chassis into the... Uh, Only push a button? That's it. What it's got, let me take show you down here. There is a little notch right here, and there's a recess that's in that drain pan that we installed. And when you push it all the way back, it's going to lock it into place. So go ahead and give it a, a good push. And now push really hard. Okay. And it, see, you felt it drop, right? So yeah, it's, it's locked into place now, and it's got us a good seal with our gasket back here uh, to the, the chassis and the plenum. So that's gonna keep the outdoor air out. So the next thing we're gonna do, uh, Edwin, is we're gonna install the electrical. So we need to remove this panel right here. There's, there's three screws uh, that secure this panel. So if you'll go ahead and remove that. Oh my God, <laughs> what is this top? So those are thermostat connectors. So depending oh. on what type of thermostat we're gonna use, and in this case, we're gonna use the uh, RAK190V thermostat. So we're gonna use this connector here. Uh, if you were gonna use a stage thermostat, which kind of inhibits the performance, but you can use one as long as it's got a Y1, Y2, uh, cooling signal you could use this one but we're going to use this one so we can set that aside for now and there you go you've already got your your connection here on on your electrical supply so all you have to do is just run it through that opening there and then lock that connector into place and just as I mentioned, we do have lockout tagout applied, especially because this one's down the hall, uh, not actually in the room. So we've got lockout tagout applied so we can, we can work safe here. And then this is a, a strain relief. So you want all of your wires to run up through that strain relief so you can tighten everything down. And if someone were to pull on that, it, it would have some resistance of, of coming out. And then you also want your power connection to go up through that as well. All right, so you've done a good job of getting everything coiled up. You've got your strain relief tightened up. Now it's just a matter of putting this back in, in place there. Now all you've got to do is just plug in your power connector here. And then this is uh, your personality plug. So what that does is it determines how much of the heater capacity is gonna be used. This is a very easy system. 
Yeah, you know. Some more security. Yes, yes, you're exactly right, you know, and that's by design. Our engineers said, you know, it needs to be something simple. So it's very easy. You like it, right? I like it. Oh. <laughs> The electrical's done. What do you think's next? <laughs> I like the system. <laughs> <laughs>all right edwin we've got this thing humming along it's it's at at max speed right now because it's very hot in here uh, we haven't had air conditioning in this room for several days right yeah. so uh, it's very hot in here it's got a lot of humidity to remove so it's it's at at max speed doing everything it possibly can so i want your opinion uh, we, we had a first company unit in here that's what you you previously had uh, you had to remove it so we could in install this one. What do you think of this system? This is easy. It's easy solution, yeah? GE. Okay. GE is more good for remove, for installation electrical. Uh -huh. It's easy. Yeah, the plug. Yep. Easy. Yep. So it's more space for working. Yeah. Yep. For cleaning. Right. It's more space. It's yep. necessary. Yeah. Uh, I like yeah. all right I'll tell you Edwin you're a hard worker you're very meticulous about what you do I enjoyed working with you uh, I just enjoy getting out and talking to, to people like yourself that you know this impacts your your life yeah. I mean if you've got to remove a big heavy unit uh, in, in every room to clean it versus something that's a lot more accessible and, and easier to get out for for maintenance and service and so I can't thank you enough thank you for you yeah <laughs> I enjoyed it my friend yeah. I really did